Hi everybody, welcome once again to another free Vectric Project of the Month. This project is called the Light It Up Hidden Seed Project and uses UV strip lighting to light up the project. I've got an inline switch so that you can turn this thing on or off as you wish. And it comes with the PDF instructions that outlines all the steps plus the rest of this video will show you some more detail that we went into to create this project for you. And as usual, you can download this project from your portal account at VNCO. And if you like, you can make this project, post pictures of it on the uh, Vectric forum. We'd love to see your work. I hope you enjoy this project. There is an interesting story behind this project. My wife went to Hernhut, Germany in one of her travels last year and saw a hand-carved long plank of a hidden seed and a sprout coming out of the end of that plank. Once I saw that photo, that's what inspired me to create this project, and so I imported the photo into Aspire, created the vectors, the models from the vectors, and then uh, to make this project compatible with vCarve users, I saved the models as a composite model, as an STL, so that vCarve users could import that STL and you know, use that uh, uh, to create this project as well. So I've already completed all the files for you. All you have to do is download them, uh, run the files, follow the instructions, and you're well on your way to creating your very own Light It Up Hidden Seed Art Project. Time to glue up the fascia frame for the shadow box and I'll just uh, apply some glue on these miters and put it all together. Got a nice flat surface here so that I don't have any issues with it being cattywampus at all. And I've got some wax paper laid down here as well. I'm just going to slide these joints a little bit and squish them together. Just get a good glue joint here. Okay, and I can double check that to make sure it's square. Yeah, that looks good. And I'll just let that dry before I glue on these other pieces of the box. Okay, I've allowed the uh, frame fascia to dry, and uh, I just, uh, once the glue was set up enough, I just used a chisel to take off the excess and uh, this was the side that I had up before that's the finished side and so I just flipped it over and I need to glue on these two groove sides the groove goes up on both sides and this bottom piece 
So I'll go ahead and apply some glue here. Glue these pieces on. Okay, got those in place, but what I want to do is put in this panel. And then line everything up properly to the panel. Once I'm satisfied with everything lining up all right, then I'll take some painter's tape and just tape everything together. Okay, I just make sure that this is lined up with that edge. And you can see that a little better if I slide it over. Okay, of course I'm not gluing in this panel. This panel needs to be removable for uh, accessing the lighting we'll put in later and, and access for any repairs or replacements necessary later. So, okay. I'll let that dry and then we'll continue on with the next step. Okay, the glue's all dry on the shadow box and uh, just stand this up here. Of course, this is meant to slide in and out and we've got this uh, piece cut so that it fits on the top there, closes off that top, keeps this from sliding out. I'll drill a couple of countersunk screws here to fasten that in when it's in use. And then you can remove the screws if you ever need to gain access to the lights. So that came out pretty well. I just need to do uh, some final sanding. But I'll go ahead and drill the countersunk holes, insert the screws, and then I'll sand everything flush. Okay, I've measured and marked out where I want to drill the countersink holes. And I just took a uh, three-quarter inch distance from the ends and then found the center. That's where I'm going to drill the countersinks and that should place them just the right position for these uh, blocks here. So uh, I'm gonna use these number six, one and a quarter inch screws and I'll countersink those, but I have a drill press, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the drill press to countersink the holes in here, get it nice and straight. You could do it by hand, you know, if you hold it straight, straight up and down. Uh, either way is fine, but I'm going to go ahead and use my drill press and then I'll come back and probably extend that hole into the end here just a little bit uh, manually. I've drilled the countersunk holes, but uh, they don't reach down far enough into the end grain of the uh, frame itself, so I'm going to extend that hole manually just using the drill with the same size drill bit appropriate for that number six screw. So I've taped everything in place so it doesn't move around on me while I drill it. Okay, and I should be able to drive these screws in after I blow out some of that dust. And that prevents the side pieces there from cracking. After all, we are going into end grain. It's not uh, something we need to be particularly strong. We just need it to hold on this cap for the frame. Okay, I've started to apply some 50-50 denatured alcohol seal coat solution to the seed panel after I got it all sanded up. I'm just going to apply as many coats as necessary, probably three or four, to get a nice smooth surface. Of course, I'll sand between each 
of these coats. Now this panel is pretty thin, so sometimes you'll notice that the panel is going to, on a thin panel like this, it's, it's going to start to warp a little. But as long as you apply this seal coat or any finish on both sides, it'll straighten out once it uh, dries. It'll equalize out, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so I'll come back uh, once I've finished applying all the coats and sanding between the coats and getting it all sealed up, and we'll go on with the next step. Okay, I ended up putting three coats of the thin bullseye uh, shellac sealer, and now I'm just following up with uh, a few coats of the Krylon Clear. This is gloss, and uh, I've already applied a few coats, and I'll follow that up with flat just to give a little bit of bite for the paint that I'm planning on putting on later. Okay, I've got the frame all sanded up and uh, ready to apply a stain to. I've chosen this Rust-Oleum Golden Mahogany stain and I'll apply that mostly with a, a rag. I'll use a brush to get into some of the crevices here. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about getting inside this slot. Just enough to hide the light wood, but uh, Pretty much just rub on the stain and let it dry. Now that the stain's dry, I'm just applying a few light coats of Krylon Clear. This is clear gloss. I'll follow that up with some satin as the final coat. I've already done the back side and the inside of the shadow box. And once this dries, then we'll come back and proceed with the rest of the build. So I've experimented quite a lot with different materials that fluoresce under the influence of black light. I've got an assortment of neon paints. These are not glow-in-the-dark paints, they're simply a neon color. And these colors I found fluoresce really, really well under UV light. And I've got uh, a palette of, on a paper plate that I was mixing paints just to see what, what they would uh, look like under black light being mixed. Colors are quite different under black light, and it's difficult to get the real effect with the camera. Somehow the infrared, I mean the uh, ultraviolet light, doesn't quite uh, show up the same as it does in real life, but uh, you get the idea. So I found uh, Elmer's glow in the dark glue. I've got, of course, the neon paints. That is a glow in the dark. Uh, substance by the way and then I discovered these uh, puff paints now this one is a glow-in-the-dark puff paint and it has dimension to it I really like that I'm going to use that on this uh, project and then this is a blue just a neon color puff paint and that really fluoresces very very well uh, you can see I experimented with that on the uh, roots I think what I'll do is I'll use that blue uh, maybe for a lightning scene or something like that. But uh, anyway, I was very pleased with how well that fluoresced. And then we have uh, green and blue glow powders. Now these are about $30 a piece for six ounces. So it's not cheap, but a little goes a long way. I've done uh, experiments with inlays before with uh, epoxies and resins, just mixing the glow powder with that, and you've probably seen other folks do that as well. So that's an option. Uh, I don't think it'll be necessary for this particular project, but uh, anyway, that's one of the things that I was testing. And then I have a, a board here where I painted on various paints and so forth to see how they reacted under the UV light. And then I had uh, a scrap that I had uh, done with some V carving and I put in some of that blue puff paint 
and fill it in and also use some of this glow-in-the-dark puff paint just to see how it looked and then also just use some of the uh, yellow regular neon craft paint and just painted some in and as you can see they all react very well with the UV light so anyhow out of all these uh, products that I've tested I'm just going to use a few three or four and uh, that'll be it for this project so we'll prepare to I'll clear off the counter and we'll prepare to actually apply some of these materials to the uh, sprouting seed board Okay, I've assembled all the materials that I uh, plan to use for the plaque and I've also suspended my UV flashlight above the work surface so that I can turn it on and off and see the reaction of the application of the fluorescent materials to the board as I work. I'm going to start with the split part of the seed and I've squirted out a little bit of this neon yellow and I've got a really small brush that I'll carefully apply this yellow inside the split of the leaf. And as I go along I can check to see what it looks like under the UV light. And I'll just continue on with that and then we'll go to the next portion. Okay, I've applied some thinned neon green paint to portions of this leaf or the sprout coming out. So just along one edge of this leaf, a little bit here, a little bit there, and it's thinned. So it gives a, a nice subtle green coloration to the portion of the sprout that comes out of the ground, if you will. And uh, under black light, of course, it will fluoresce. Now, whether or not there'll be much black light or UV light escaping out of that opening at the top uh, remains to be seen, but whatever does escape, it'll tend to glow this uh, up a little bit, and in any case, it will have this nice, subtle green tint to the sprout. So, uh, I'll also apply a thin version of uh, this neon orange paint to the seed here and then uh, I'll show you how to apply some of this fabric puff paint to make uh, roots for the sprouted uh, seed. Okay the neon paints are dry and all I'm doing now is just inspecting with the UV flashlight to make sure that there's no stray spots of the neon paint before I apply just a, a couple light coats, very light coats of Krylon Clear just to seal this paint in. So it looks good. If I uh, did find any spots, of course, I'd either scrape or sand those off. So it was looking good. Okay, so I'll just uh, apply a couple light coats of uh, Clear. And I'm just sealing in that paint. Okay, I'll let that dry and then we'll be ready to install the lights in the shadow box. Okay, the clear coat's dry on the paint and I just want to apply some uh, roots with this uh, fabric, dimensional fabric paint or puff paint, some people call it. This is glow in the dark, but that's not so important. It, the only important thing is it reacts under UV light, which of course it does. And basically I'm just gonna squirt some of this out uh, in root patterns. And I've got a couple toothpicks here in case I want to draw out some of that root design. So you might wanna practice a little bit on a paper plate before you actually go to the board. If you really mess up, you can wipe it off. Since the wood is sealed, you can wipe it off really quickly with some paper towel and start over. 
but if you want to try to pull this along where there's no air bubbles and just make it look like roots coming from that sprouting seed. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Just make sure I don't have any air in there. I'm going to squish this out a little bit. There we go. So you can draw as, as much or as little as you like. I think I'll go ahead and draw just one more branch of roots coming from that seed center. Okay, and you can check it as you go uh, with your UV flashlight or UV light just to see what it looks like. I think that's, that's pretty good. I think I'll just leave it at that and I'll let that dry. It's going to take an hour or so to really set up very well, but uh, I'll leave this overnight actually before I put the panel into the box and seal it up. Okay, so I'm having my son Benjamin help me with the LEDs. He's got some experience with this. So I've got the UV LED roll and uh, the power connector, power supply and switch. And Benjamin is just getting the lengths where he has to cut them off because he's gonna solder some wire at each corner so it goes around the corner on the inside of the frame fascia. Of course, in, anybody can do this. It's simple soldering and just uh, you know, measuring the lengths or as Ben is doing, just aligning the tape to get his lengths manually without any actual measuring. But since my son is handy and he's got some experience with this, he offered to help me and so uh, that's what he's doing. Okay, so we'll come back after he gets this soldered up and we'll mount it inside the frame. Okay, we're just soldering the bridge wires across the third corner of the LED strips. And we're just taping everything down on a scrap board just to help line things up and get everything laid flat while the bridge wires are being soldered on each uh, corner of the LED strips. So this end here is what will be connected to the actual power supply wire that comes in through the shadow box. So we've got one, two, three corners and that will go inside this uh, shadow box and then make a little notch in that panel and uh, have the LED strips mounted here, a little notch in the panel so that the wire could exit here and uh, should be able to button it up after that. Thank you Ben for helping me out on this. You're welcome. Okay, we've got the three corners soldered and uh, we're just using one of these quick connectors for the DC current coming from the AC adapter. And uh, we'll just plug that in, see if it works, and it does. All right, of course we'll put in the inline switch as well, but it's ready for mounting in the box. All right, mounting the LED inside the frame interior. Now on the back of these LED strips it has a self-stick backing. You just peel that off and stick it down on the surface of the interior of the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and carry that all the way around the perimeter and come back to you and show you 
after it's fastened down. I glued a little tiny piece of popsicle stick in the corner just as sort of a keeper to keep this from rotating when I move this wire over to the corner because it was having a tendency to want to pull up from here so I just glued in with some super glue that little tiny wooden keeper okay I've got the LED strips pressed down inside mounted inside the frame here now all I have to do is to make an exit for this wire so when I put the panel in here I'm going to cut out a little notch down here in the corner to allow that wire to exit and depending where you want it to, to go this is going to be used as a shelf display but if I were doing this for say a wall display or something like that I would probably just drill a hole in the middle here for that wire to come down through and uh, but since this is for a desktop I'm going to go ahead and just notch out a little portion of this panel and just mark it with a pencil just make a small notch to allow for that wire all right you can see I notched out that little bit from the panel to allow for the wire to exit the box nicely so we'll just slide that in position that wire there we go and all we need to do is to fasten this top down and we're done To finish off and close off these uh, screw countersunk screws, you can just get a couple of dowel caps and uh, place them in there. You can use some of that uh, wax they use to keep candles secure in candelabras. It's a soft wax. You can just squish some of that wax down in here and push that in and the wax will hold those things in place, but allow for easy removal later if you ever need to take the box apart. Time for the final test. I've got my pigtail coming out of the box and I've got this inline switch. I'll just plug that in and plug that switch into the AC adapter. Plug that in and let's see if it works. Well, what do you know? Looks like it works great. Yeah. Pretty pleased with that, works great.